Hey everyone, my name is Eran Stern. I'm a motion designer and an educator working with Cinema 4D for almost a decade now. Now, I have established a track record in helping designers to improve their skills with visual effects and motion graphics. Spreading that knowledge and seeing my students shine through their own talent and aptitude leaves me content and enthusiastic towards a new generation of motion designers. And since this is the case, instead of showing you my own work, which you can easily find on my website, sternfx.com, I've chosen to play you a reel of my students' work. Few of them already surpass me, which makes me so proud and so envy at the same time. So think of me as the director or producer for this body of work. Good stuff. Okay, so today I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a personal passion project that I did recently. Like many of you, I was in lockdown for a few months and to keep my creative juices flowing, I understood that I need to be my own client. So inspired by my Instagram feed, along with a few TV shows, I created this short piece of an astronaut locked outside his time and place. Now I must tell you right here, right now, that this is going to be a beginner level session covering basic stuff of Cinema 4D. I'm going to show you how to rig, texture and animate the astronaut model and then demonstrate how to maximize the collaboration with After Effects. We're also going to share 3D data between the applications, use Cineware for mock-up purposes and work with 3D passes to comp different versions without compromising creativity. Okay, so we're going to start our journey with this free model of an astronaut that I found on the internet floor. This model was created by Domenico Dialisa and it's free to use and of course it will save us weeks of work. So this is going to be my starting point. I'm going to open it now inside Cinema 4D. So here inside the application, I can orbit around the astronaut model just to show it to you from different angles. And this is a very articulated model. By that I mean it has a lot of details. So if I select it here in the object manager, and I'll open the null object, we can see all the individual objects that came with this OBJ. This means that it will be quite easy for us if we'll need to select the boots, for example, or the helmet, or the gloves, or anything in this uh, model, and just texture it and apply materials. And we are going to do it later. But I just want to show you that if I'm going to press Command I, we have tons of data here. Actually, we have close to 1 million polygons, which is a lot. It is more than we need. So I need to make it a little bit more simpler. So I'll click OK over here. And just to show you how this looks and to check the density, I'll go to the display menu and I'll change it to quick shading lines. And now if I'll zoom in, we can see that we have an almost opaque model. So super dense with a lot of details, too much details for our purposes. 
So I'm going to hold and click on the generator and I'll select the polygon reduction generator. I'll make sure to click over here where it says reduce all generator children as one object. And this means that it will analyze everything underneath. Now, it will take some time. This is a procedural effect. And you can take a look at the bottom of the application, uh, the amount of time that it takes it to calculate. So you'll need to be patient with it and wait for all the sliders to be available as well as the mesh that we are seeing now. So now we can go back and select Goroud shading again, just so we can compare between the previous state and this one. And you can see that by reducing it to 90%, we are saying goodbye to most of the data. However, we are still left with enough polygons and vertices to describe it. And if I'm going to orbit around this astronaut, we can see that although now we have close to 100,000 polygons, it still looks very similar compared to the original. Excellent. All right, so now we need to bake all those polygons because we need this object to only have the output of the polygon reduction generator. So I'm going to either click on this icon, make editable, or just press C. And this, of course, will bake everything. And this is a redundant object now, the polygon reduction generator. Underneath, we have all the data that we need. So I'm just going to grab and take it outside of the hierarchy, say goodbye to this null object. And I'm also going to double click and rename this one to astronaut, just so it will be a little bit more easier for me to understand. Now, if I'm going to press Command I again, we can see that we left with around 200,000 polygons, which is 80% less of what we started with. And still, it looks great. All right, so now I'm going to go under File and save a reduced version, a simplified version of the regular one, because I don't want to harm the original. And then I'll return to the File menu and choose Export. And under Export, I'll select FBX. Now, the reason that I'm doing it is because I want to export this model to Mixamo and then create a rig over there. So I happen to know that Mixamo really like version 7.3 of the FBX. So I'm just going to choose it from this pop-up menu. And you don't need to change anything over here. So basically, you can just click OK. Then I'm going to give it a name and click Save to export an FBX file. Now I'm going to switch to Mixamo, which on my machine is already running inside Chrome. So I've already logged in using my Adobe Creative Cloud credentials. And this means that I can now look at the characters. Those are built-in characters in this wonderful website, as well as the animations. And I can also start to look for something which is pre-made. So since we want our astronauts to float in mid-air, I'm going to start to type floating and see what I can come up with. So we have a couple of options. You can hover your mouse around or on top of each one of them. But I think that I'm going to go with the first one over here. So you can get a sense how this looks in this preview. Now, this is, of course, not the model that we need. This is just a placeholder model, the default one. So I'll click on Upload Character, then select the Character File, navigate to where I saved my file. So this is the FBX version. Click Open and upload it. So depending on your internet speed, this may take a bit more time. I'm going to speed up this process. And then after a moment or two, we are going to see this auto rigger. So if everything is OK, you can just click Next. And then this is super simple. You just need to take those pins and place those markers according to the sketch that you are seeing in the right hand side. So just very quickly grab the chin, then the wrists and the elbows. Note that we are using symmetry, so we only need to drag one of those markers. So I'm going to end up with everything over here. I think this needs to be on the belt. And I'll click Next. And then we need to wait for approximately two minutes, but sometimes it can take more and sometimes less. Again, I'm just going to speed up this process. And after it finished doing its magic, this is what we are getting. 
we can see our astronaut is looking to the right and look to the left. We can orbit around him. And I'm doing it just because we just reduced 90% of the polygons. So I just want to make sure it's OK. Then I'll click Next. And then I'll wait for a moment. And here we go. This is being applied to the animation that we've set, to the floating animation. So I can change those sliders and just make it my own. And you can just basically see the result in real time. I'm going to give myself more frames, actually the maximum amount of frames, and then play with the movement range as well as the overdrive. And last but not least, the character arm space to get something which is a little bit slower and more floating in the air style which will work perfect with the image, with the background that I have. I'm going to show it to you in a moment. But now I'm just going to click Download, set my frames per second to 24, since this is my video frame rate, and click Download. And this is going to download the asset to your Downloads folder. Now we're going to switch to After Effects, where we already have a composition with the video that we're going to use for the astronaut to be in. And just in case you're curious, this was shot with my iPhone. This place is called Sarat Batam. It's 20 minutes from London, and we are going to actually use it. But before doing so, we need to solve the camera. So I'm going to quickly track the camera here inside After Effects. And I'm going to speed up this process because this is obviously not an After Effects tutorial. But just to let you know what we are doing, we are triangulating this plane by clicking on three trackers and then setting up the ground plane origin. And then I'm going to create a solid on the ground. Now I'm going to press R so I can see the orientation and rotation. And usually I need to play with the Z rotation just to make sure that it is perpendicular to the path that we have here. Now, because I want to export stuff from After Effects to Cinema 4D, as well as import stuff back, I need to normalize the scene. So this is not a mandatory step, but it will make things much more simpler in the future. So I'm going to rely on this free script named Normalize Track, and you can get it from the website that you are seeing on screen. You also have a tutorial here, so feel free to watch it. Anyhow, I've already downloaded the script and installed it, so I'm returning to After Effects, and I need to name my ground plane floor or ground. So in this case, I'm just going to call it floor. And then I'll go under window and launch the normalized track script. Now over here, all you need to do is just click on this button to normalize the track. It looks like nothing has happened. I'm going to close this script, but it's actually going to duplicate the ground. It's going to name it original ground. I'm actually going to unlock this layer and delete it. I don't need it. And notice that if I click and select the floor layer and then press P to show the position, this layer is now set to the middle of an HD comp, which is going to make our life much more simpler when we are going to bring 3D elements into this composition. And just to check that everything is in line with the ground plane, I'll go to the effect menu and under generate, I'll add the grid effect. Then I'll select the layer and stretch it so it will cover most of the ground over here and I'll scrub the timeline. I'm also going to change the width and height sliders to have more cells. So let's go with 110 for the width and height and set the border to 1, just so it will look a little bit more high techy, I guess. And then I'll just press spacebar or play to preview it here inside After Effects. And it looks like we have a decent track. So now that everything is checked and ready, we can export the scene from After Effects to Cinema 4D. For that, I'll choose File Export and select Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. Now, the moment that I'll choose it, After Effects is going to yell at me and say that there are 2D layers here which are not going to be exported. That's totally fine. It's a little bit of an intimidating error, but just say OK. Everything is going to work nice. All right, so now I'm just going to go and save this as my main scene. So I'll name it Astronaut. I'll save it inside the 3D folder that I've created for this project. And this is everything that we need to do in this state inside After Effects. So I'll switch back to Cinema 4D and let's open the scene and prepare it. 
So I'll go to open project and open the astronaut.c4d file that we've just exported from After Effects. And this is going to show us in the object manager a null object which has our 3D tracker camera as well as the floor layer. The video layer didn't survive. We're going to recreate it in a moment. But notice that the green color of the solid is maintained. Now, the advantage of working like this is that we don't need to set anything now inside Cinema 4D. So it already understands the dimensions as well as the length of the project. It's already set the frames per second to the same video that we've used, so 24 in my case, and we are ready to go. This is why I love this workflow of starting in After Effects and then exporting a Cinema 4D file. All right, so now let's just work on what we have here. I'll select the floor and I'll turn it to an X-ray layer. I just want to see it on top of the video. I'm also going to double click on the material and lower the saturation to zero. So we're just going to see a gray solid. And I'm also going to double click and rename this ridiculous long name just to save a bit more space here in the object manager. And I'm also going to move it a touch. All right. So now I'm ready to recreate the background here inside Cinema 4D. To do so, I'll click and hold on the floor icon here and select background. And I'm also going to create a new material by double clicking on this area and I'll name it BG. Then I'll double click on the material editor. We don't need any reflectance, so I'll dismiss it. And for the color, I'm going to use a texture which I've already placed inside the TEX folder. So I'll select the SART HD file. This is the video file from After Effects. Click OK, and then Cinema will not shout at me. All right, I need to now define the quality. So in the material editor, I'll click where it says viewport and make sure to tick the animate preview. Next, where it says texture preview size, I'll set it to no scaling because I want to see a high quality representation of the video here inside Cinema 4D. Then I'll close this dialog and apply it to the background. And now if I'll play the result here inside the viewport, we can see and check that everything is working according to our expectations, and it does. Now, if this Cinema 4D grid bothers you, then you can switch the work plane under filter and just leave yourself with the X-ray version of the floor, which is going to serve us nicely to catch the shadow. All right, the last thing that we need to do is create some sort of a sky object, and this is for the reflection. So I'll create a sky object. I'll double click to create a material over here. I'll name it reflection and double click on this guy. I don't need a reflectance again, so I'll click on the color chip and then I'll use once again the texture and I'll select this seamless environment layer that I've exported from After Effects and I've already feathered the edges. Now it's not instead of a 360 HDRI image, but this is what I had. So I'm basically using a 4K image. This is the original shot and I'm faking it, but it's going to give us enough details from the scene and it's going to suffice perfectly. So I'll click open and then I'll apply the material to the sky object. Now, obviously we don't need to see it at this stage. We are just going to use it for the reflections. So I'll hold the option or Alt key and double click on this traffic light to switch off the render and the viewport view for this object. And now it's time to open up the floating.fbx file that we've exported from Mixamo. So I'm going to open it up and then I'm going to say OK to this dialog. And just to verify that everything is working, I'll play it over here inside Cinema. We can see that we have some strange three materials that we don't really need, but it's actually working quite nicely. We also got a Cinema 4D editor camera as well as an active take. Now, this is very important because this consists of a skin. This is the astronaut as well as the rig itself, which is this Mixamo rig columns hips. So I just want to show you why this is important because 
if I'm going to select the astronaut and then switch to the scale tool and try to scale it, this is just going to mess with the skin. It's not going to properly scale the astronaut. It's not going to even work with the Mixamo rig here because once again, this is just the skeleton. So now the skin is trying to stretch itself and fit the new scaling. Now I'm showing it to you because when you export stuff from Mixamo to Cinema, it's usually going to change the scale. And we actually need to scale it to the correct dimensions once we are going to bring it to the scene that we've exported from After Effects. So I'm going to show you a workaround that I found. There are probably a clever way to do it, but just bear this in mind. Notice that we have keyframes for everything here. And also notice these keyframes are ending at 336 frames. So we're also going to need to stretch it. All right, but for now, I'm going to make sure that both the astronaut and the Mixamo rig are selected. Then let's go to the edit menu and copy it to memory. And then I want to switch to one of the open documents that I have running in the background. So I'll press and hold the letter V, which is going to show me this quick menu over here. And I'm going to switch to the astronaut.c4d. Here in this document, I'm going to close the null object and then press Command V to paste the astronaut and the Mixamo rig. And as you can see, he is very tiny. We can hardly see him in this scale. And this was anticipated. So I need to scale him back. And you may think that you can group both of them under a new null, but this is not going to work as well. So this is what I came up with. I'm going to use the freeze transformation under the joint, under the rig. And this is almost like a null object that comes with every object of Cinema 4D and will apply itself before the coordinates. So we can actually use all of this freeze transformation to scale and rotate it. And I know from experience that it needs to be 300%, I guess, for all the axes. So I'm just going to fill it in. And now if I'll scrub the timeline, we have a decent scale astronaut. Now I'm not saying this is physically correct. I'm eyeballing it. But again, this is something that I can do with the passion project. Okay, so now I'm going to change the rotation heading at the same time to negative 90 degrees. The pitch I think should be at negative 50. And lastly, the bank, let's give it 10%, sorry, 10 degrees. And then I'm just going to push him on its Z axis. So when we are going to come closer to the astronaut, we're going to actually pass behind him. So I think that I need to push him even further. Let's go with round numbers, so 750. And let's see how this works. I think that I need, of course, to raise him up. So let's go to the position Y and just raise him, I don't know, maybe to 200 centimeters. And of course, we need to also move in, in his x-axis. So I'll type in negative 200 centimeters and I'll scrub the timeline and we are entering his leg when he's raising it. And I think that I'll need to work on this in a later time. But notice that the animation that we have is not long enough. If I will play the result and I'll select the Mixamo rig here, you'll see that we only have 336 frames, which means that towards the end is just going to freeze the motion and it's going to leave the screen. And I want him to continue to move as he is floating in mid air. So to do so, I'll open up again the null object that we've got from After Effects, the featherweight. And for now, I'll switch off the visibility of the floor layer. We don't need to see it. And then I'll select the Mixamo rig layer, go to the animate menu and choose to add a motion clip. I'll name this one astronaut and I'm going to include the position, rotation and parameter. Those are the default values, but you can of course add the scale or point level animation, just make sure that you are capturing the entire duration. So from zero to 336. 
and then click on the tag that was added and over here in the attributes I'll click on opening TL which is timeline and now we can see that we have a clip for the astronaut which means that we can control the speed of him after the fact we can stretch all of those keyframes they are basically being baked into this motion clip which is great I can just drag the edge of it and scale it until the end of my composition 360 frames and this means that now it will play a little bit slower 107.14 in this case but it will still play so the astronaut is going to move until the end of the frame I'm just going to play it for you over here since I can use the new viewport attributes of Cinema 4D and it's going to work in real time so I really love this but then again it doesn't really leave the screen where I want him to live so maybe we can stretch him to even go slower let's try 420 and again I'm going to play for you the result this is so flexible this tool I really love it because it basically allow you to stretch the animation without any penalty so you can make it go faster or slower even if you didn't render enough frames from Mixamo but I think that I'm going to stick with 360 um, just because I'm compulsive no other reason so let's just say goodbye to the timeline for now and also add a secondary motion what I like to do is create some sort of an extra movement for this astronaut so he will have a little bit more character and to do it I'll select the Mixamo rig again and under tags under the animation tags I'll add the vibrate tag and this is going to allow me to add some automatic animation so think about it almost like a wiggle animation if you're coming from After Effects now just so the skeleton of the rig will not be in my way I'll go to the filter menu and I'll switch off the visibility for the joint and this means that I can see exactly what I'm doing I'm also going to go to the filter menu again and turn off the axis temporarily just so we'll have a clear indication of what we are doing we're going to bring it back in a moment but now let's move forward in time to around 200 frames and let's enable the position of the vibrate tag and I'm going to change the amplitude to 50 centimeters for the X and 100 for the Y and then play it to you and you can see that the frequency is making this guy jump all over the place so obviously this is too much I'm going to lower it to 0.2 and then play it again and you can see that we are adding an extra motion in the position thanks to the vibrate tag now I don't want to mess with the scale but I will add a bit more rotation to the mix so I'll enable it and then I'll zero out the X for the amplitude and maybe only give him let's say 20 degrees for the Y and again the default value is very funny so we need to lower it to let's say 0.1 just to give a hint of rotation and this is of course almost like a random rotation which is calculating in real time on top of everything that we did so far giving him a little bit more life and also making him move differently so now let's go towards the end and adjust the position and I want to remind you that we need to work with the freeze transformation here I actually need to move backward in time so I can see what I'm doing and then I'll play with the position X I want him to fly underneath the camera so maybe we will need to lower it on its Y axis and I'll scroll back and forth just to verify that I have what I need and finally I'll play the result together with the vibrate tag as well as the motion clip and just check that everything is in order and I think it is so now we can add some lights okay so I'll stop the playback I'll go to the beginning I'll click and hold on the light object and grab a simple light in the coordinates I'll close the freeze transformation we no longer need it services anymore and I want to raise this light to, let's say 1000 centimeters above him so it can cast shadows on the floor and to do so I'll go to the shadow tab 
and make sure to use the shadow maps soft. Uh, I'm also going to enlarge the resolution of the shadow from the default to 1250 by 1250, which is going to yield better and uh, I guess more high resolution shadows. Now to see them, we need to open up the featherweight null object, select the floor and enable it because the shadows are going to render on this floor. Now, currently it is overlapping with the leg of the astronaut since we animate him so much. So I'll press Alt D. This is going to bring back the axis so I can see. It. And then I'm just going to drag the floor down a bit, making sure that it is not overlapping in any frame with the astronaut. All right, so now I can press Command or Control R if you're working on the PC to render the shadows on the floor. And as you can see, it looks great. Now I'm going to move forward and render it again just to verify that indeed I'm getting the shadow where I need them to be. And in this case, since the light has only one source light, the sun, all the shadows are going to merge together except for the areas where we are seeing light spots on the field where the trees are not casting their shadows. So the shadow of the astronaut is going to be visible only in these areas. This is very important for making this scene more realistic. So I'm rendering it to the viewer by pressing Command R just to verify that the shadows are in the correct location. And of course, we need to composite them after the fact inside After Effects. So now I'm just going to middle click to see all the orthographic views. I'll switch off the visibility of the background just to give you a hint of what we have here, where the light is and where the floor is. And again, I'll render the scene so we can get a sense of what we are working with. And we're going to stick with this view. We no longer need the background. This is just a helping device. But I think that I want to fill in more light. So let's go to frame 250 and add another light. This one will be an area light. And I'll go to the general tab. I'll lower the intensity to 50%. I just want it to be a fill light and maybe also warm it a touch by raising the saturation to 5%, leaving all the other values as is. And again, I'll test render it by pressing Command R. And now I'll need to go to the coordinates and make sure to change the position of the light so I can actually see it. Let's go backward in time. And I'm just going to drag and place this area light in front of the astronaut, maybe 200 centimeters on the Y axis to make sure that it is lighting the area that I need it to light. And I'll test it again. I think it works great. Excellent. Now it's time to add some materials and texture to give this astronaut and all of his parts an interesting look. Now, this is a bit of a boring process, so I'm going to speed it up and give you the important information. First, I'll select and delete those three materials that came from Mixamo, and then I'll select all of the materials placeholder in the object, the question mark, and just say goodbye to them. And I'll start by creating a new material for the glass. This, of course, should be a reflective material. So I'll go quickly to the reflectance channel and I'll create something which is reflective. Now, obviously the values here doesn't really matter. I'm just creating stuff which I think looks great and then applying it to the correct object. So it will make sense when we'll enable the sky object, then we'll see the reflections. And then I'll create a texture for the stripes. So I'll double click in the material editor, name the material stripes. And this time I'll play a bit with the luminance. So it will be more brighter than the other ones. And then I'll apply it to the parts that needs the stripes material. Next we'll do the suit pocket and then the suit itself. And for the suit, I'm also going to enable the bump and apply a fabric texture. And then I'll create a shiny material for the boots, the gloves, and part of the helmet. 
And finally, I'll create a shiny red material for the helmet itself. And it's going to be a conductive material for what it's worth. And now if I'll render it here in the viewport, you can get a sense of how this looks. Now to see the reflections, we need to enable the sky object. So notice that now when I'm rendering it here in the viewport, we can see the colors from the texture of the sky object. But obviously we don't want to see this in the final render. So to eliminate this problem, I'll make sure to select the layer and go under tags and under render tags, I'll apply the composition tag and disable the scene by camera. So now if I'll re-render it, we will see the reflections in the helmet screen as well as in the gloves and the boots, but the sky object itself is not going to be visible by the camera. And then I also want to add another compositing tag, this one for the astronaut. And this is going to allow me to enable an object buffer, which is going to be very important when we'll render passes from Cinema 4D in the final stage. The last step that I'll do here, and this is mostly to check it when I'll use Cineware, is to create two layers, one for the astronaut and the other one for the ground shadows. So I'll need to make sure to select the astronaut and all of his children and a nice keyboard shortcut for it is to select the object and then middle click on it. And this is going to select all the children at once. And then you can basically just drag and drop everything to the layers panel and it will get the same color label. Of course, you can change the color. And then I'll create another layer, this one for the ground shadows. And I'll drag and drop the floor object and also colorize it to a dark tint of gray. And this is just to indicate that these are the shadows. I'm also going to switch on and off the visibility for these layers just to verify that everything is in order. And the last step here is to go under the project settings. You can also press Command or Control D and then click on the Cineware tab and enable save polygon cache as well as material cache. You can also save the animation cache. And this is going to make sure that everything that we've created so far is going to be transformed when we are bringing it to After Effects and using the Cineware plugin. So now I'll go to File and choose Save Project for Cineware. And I'm going to save it on top of the current version of the astronaut. So I'll just click save and replace this document. And finally, we are ready to bring it to After Effects. So here in After Effects, I've already imported the astronaut file and place it in this comp. And automatically, this will apply the Cineware plugin. Now I'm going to enable the Cinema 4D layers just to show you that we can access them from here. So let's switch off the ground shadows and click OK. And this is going to make the shadows disappear. But now we can select it in After Effects, duplicate another version, name it Ground Shadows, enable it as well as the astronaut. So we need both of them to be active for the ground shadows to be seen here because the astronaut is what's casting the shadows. And we can see that we are back to where we were before. And to see it in its final quality, I'll change the renderer to current. Now notice that this option, Synchronize AE Layer, is switched on by default, meaning that it will change the settings to both the astronaut and any copy of it. So this is what's great with this integration between Cinema 4D and After Effects. All right, so now let's deal with the shadows. I'm just going to change the blending mode to Multiply. And remember that we only need them to be visible in these highlight spots on the ground. So first I'll use a simple mask here in After Effects to isolate only the shadow parts on the floor. And then using a levels adjustment, I'll brighten up the shadows and then I'll move to let's say frame 200 and try to match it with what I'm seeing on the floor. But first let's take care of the shadow area, meaning we need to create a simple mat from the original layer to hide the shadows. So I'll duplicate another instance of my background 
and then I'll delete the 3D camera tracker and I'll apply under keying the extract effect. And this is going to help me to basically create a luma key version of only the areas that I want to keep in the shot. So only those highlights on the ground. And of course we can add some softness so we'll have a nice soft transition. And this should be the luma mat for the ground shadow layer. And now you can see that it actually works as expected. So we are seeing shadows only in the desired areas. Now, if you're working with a Cinema 4D file, by default, you also have access to all the multi-passes, even without defining anything in Cinema. So to demonstrate how this works in the After Effects side, I'll enable the Cinema 4D multipass, and then I'll click on Set Multipass. And this will allow you to choose between predefined multipasses, which are embedded in this file. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to add all the image layers, which are going to add everything except of the post effects, as well as switching the blending mode here inside After Effects automatically for you. You can just start compositing with this live instance of this Cinema 4D file inside After Effects. You can, of course, delete the passes that you don't need, or you can press T and change the opacity of the other passes, for example, the reflection, or do other stuff like adding effects. And since everything is synchronized, you can make changes at any given time. So talking about changes, let's return to Cinema 4D now and set up our multi-pass render. This is going to be the final state. So I just want to show you what I did before showing you the final composite in After Effects. So I'm clicking on the render settings here and making sure to enable the multi-pass image and in this case, I've chosen to render to a PNG sequence. Of course, you can use the new capabilities of the OpenEXR file, which is going to give you bigger files, but everything is going to be embedded in those files. Just for the sake of simplicity, I went with the PNG sequence, and I'm also going to save a compositing project file, which is going to help me to recreate what I've just showed you with Cineware, but this time with rendered files. Now, for the physical render that I'm using, you can set a higher sampling quality depending on your need. So you can just test a few settings here and decide what works for you. But before rendering, I also want to show you another important thing. And this is under the memory preferences of Cinema 4D. So go over there and before starting to render, change the amount of megabytes, the amount of memory that you are giving the picture viewer. I usually set it to 4096 megabytes, and this is going to help you to speed up the render once you initiate it from Cinema 4D. All right, so I'll close this dialog, and finally, I'll click on Render to Picture Viewer, which is going to render those passes, and if we're going to check them, we can see the single pass individually, and this is going to help us to combine everything back inside After Effects. So obviously this is a sped up process. I don't want you to sit here and watch paint dry. I'll fast forward in time and show you that this render took almost 30 minutes, not too bad. And now we are ready to bring those files into After Effects and review the final composition. So back inside After Effects, this is the featherweight Cineware composition, this time with the predefined passes that I showed you now in Cinema 4D. But I've already took care of it and I imported the compositing file, which is going to create all the passes over here using the PNG sequence. So this is how it looks. And now it's the final render and it is very fast to scrub and work. So what I did initially is created this composition by using few of the Red Giant plugins. And just to walk you through these steps, I'm going to press spacebar to play the result. There is a new text file that I've placed here and I've created some sort of a bounce to the astronaut. 
Now, since this is bouncing into the frame, I figure out, let's also add some particles using Particular. So I'll show you the designer window. I started with one of the presets here under Nature. You've got a couple of leaves. This is the one that I've used and modified it so it will look like few leaves are just falling when this astronaut is being thrown to this scene. Then I thought that if he will hit the floor, we'll need to add some dust cloud over here. And this is exactly what I did. And then to spice it up, I've also added few lens effects from Rampant Design, as well as few lens distortion. So these are just 3D layers which are moving with the camera that we have here. You can see how this works. And I'm also going to enable a couple of those lens effects or light leaks. You can get a sense of how everything is working together. Then I realized that we need some sort of a camera shake at the heating moment. So I added this using the universe camera shake effect. And I've used one of the presets here and just tone it down. So now it looks like this with a bit of a camera shake, almost scared me. And then finally, I ended up with adding a magic bullet looks. And again, if I click on the edit button, you will see the entire interface. I've started up with one of the presets here and then modified to my needs. And finally, I've also added back the floor, this time with a linear wipe. So remember, we have a grid on the floor and this creates this kind of an intro, making it look a little bit more of a sci-fi. So obviously, I took it to a different direction from my initial brief. And I looked at it a few times and finally realized, well, I'm not sure if this really tells the story that I wanted it to tell. So finally, I removed most of it and came up with this final version, which is without any additional third party tools. I'm using a few Lumetri colors here as well as optic compensation, some camera lens blur to blur the edges of the shot, adding some noise. And I'm also adding some camera shake and few distortions to create some sort of a low budget camera. So I'll maximize this and play it to you again, this time with the audio that I've created especially for this shot. So this is it. Everyone needs an astronaut in their showreel and now you can have one too. I hope that even though this was a basic demo, you still picked up at least one new thing that you didn't know, which should make this a happy day for you. So I want to thank Maxon for having me here and thank you for sticking until the end. If you want more of me, you can find all my details and links to my online courses at en.sternfx.com. So until next time, take care and have a safe flight home. Oh, I forgot, you're already at home right now. So stay safe and stay creative. Yeah, that's better, I think. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>